thank you for being here. This past weekend, to me, it's uh, it's one of those weekends that I, uh, I, I, it's a very solemn weekend. You know, people say, oh, it's a Memorial Day weekend, dude, beaches and barbecues and all that kind of stuff. But to me, I'm very mindful of what the true reason for that part of the season is. And it's a solemn one. It's probably probably one of the most solemn uh, holidays we have as a country here in the United States of America. Now, let me uh, let me just find something for you. And that will be, uh, let me see here. And I just want to read to you. I just want to read to you uh, a little bit about Memorial Day. And like I said, dude, that was a couple of days ago. Yeah, but a lot of folks get this confused with Veterans Day. And, and these folks that have lost someone who, who were, you know, killed or died while serving in the United States Armed Forces, that's their day. I'm talking Gold Star families. And you might say, well, what's a gold star family? We'll talk about that as well. But uh, that's why I'm just mentioning it right now. No knock on anybody who's like so proud of their relatives or their loved ones or friends or whatever that serve, that are veterans. That's fantastic in itself. However, yesterday uh, at, the, at a couple of functions I was at, and specifically one in general I'm thinking about, I approached a group of very old veterans and I said hey gentlemen thank you very very much for your service and they looked at me and they just nodded and and they weren't it's not that they were ungrateful I know what it was and it was they were humbled and simultaneously almost embarrassed because it was like they were being very polite to me right it was almost as if they wanted to say listen thank you but this isn't our day. This is the day of our fallen brothers and sisters who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Um, killed in action, you know, hurt or died just performing their duties in the United States Armed Forces. Not like served in the Army or any branch and then was discharged and you know, then they died of old age or died in, in regular life. Memorial Day is selected for those folks that who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces while protecting us, while serving for us so we can be free or helping other folks around the world. That's their day. And those who lose someone while in service, while serving, they become, sadly, Gold star families, that's something I guess you don't want to be. And that just signifies and indicates that you are a family member. One of your family members have been killed or passed away while serving in their duty. And that is what Memorial Day is observed for. Now, hell, here we go. And then we'll take this from the old Wicca Wiki. Memorial Day, excuse me. Memorial Day, originally known as Decoration Day, is a federal holiday in the United States for honoring and mourning the U.S. military personnel who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. From 1868 to 1970, it was observed on May 30th. Since 1970, it is observed on the last Monday of May. And, uh, of course, it's a federal holiday here in the United States, and the significance is it honors the U.S. military personnel who died in service. It also serves as the unofficial beginning of summer. So many people visit cemeteries and memorials on Memorial Day to honor and mourn those who died while serving in the United States military. Many volunteers place American flags on the graves of military personnel in national cemeteries. Memorial Day is also considered the unofficial beginning of summer, as I just said. The first national observance of Memorial Day occurred on May 30th, 1868, then known as Decoration Day. The holiday was proclaimed by Commander-in-Chief John A. Logan of the Grand Army of the Republic to honor the Union soldiers who had died in the Civil War. Uh, this national observance was preceded by many local ones between the end of the Civil War and Logan's Declaration. Uh, many cities and people have claimed it to be the first to observe it. However, the National Cemetery Administration, a division of the Department of Veterans Affairs, credits Marianne Williams with originating the idea of strewing the graves of Civil War soldiers, Union and Confederate, with flowers. So there you go, man. It's uh, well, Let me read this a little bit. Two other days celebrate those who have served or are serving in the U.S. military. Armed Forces Day, which is earlier in May, 
and an unofficial U.S. holiday for honoring those currently serving in the armed forces, and Veterans Day on November 11th, which honors all those who have served in the United States Armed Forces. So you can see the confusion there. This is a special day, and let me get back into this here. And this here uh, is a little bit of information that comes from the USO.org. What is a Gold Star family? Well, and this is by uh, Samira Hediat, and this is on the USA.org. No one wants to be a Gold Star family. The title, which is reserved for families of military members who have died in the line of duty, is meant to honor the service members' ultimate sacrifice while acknowledging their family's loss, grief, and continued healing. Even though the nation isn't currently part of a conflict of an all-encompassing war such as World War II, only 1% of the U.S. population serves in the military today versus 12% that served during World War II. Uh, there are more living Gold Star families than you might think. And it's very sad. You, like Again, uh, in 9-11, since 9-11, over 16,000 troops have died in non-combat circumstances, and 7,000 died in Iraq and Afghanistan alone. To honor these and all Gold Star families, here is a look at the history and significance of this somber design. Uh, the phrase Gold Star Family dates back to World War I. And, uh, and the star's color would, uh, you know, it indicates a lost loved one in war. Sometimes you go by a house and you look over and you see, you see that. You see it in a window. And, and that's just to designate and indicate that they have lost somebody while serving. So uh, something really special, and it's really, really special to those families, which yesterday I had the privilege and honor of talking to one such family member. So the family uh, and the people that I'm speaking to, it was, a, it was a gentleman by the name of Bill Martin. I noticed his bicycle, and if you go to Finding Subjects on Facebook, You'll see the photograph I have there of this bicycle and a picture of Bill Martin's older brother, John Martin. Now, uh, I also put a little video up there as well as me of me interviewing Bill Martin. And you could see uh, how touching it was at, and, and how sad it was to watch in regards to uh, this pain that is still there with him and his family members after so many years. I'm uh, Tony from Finding Subjects Podcast. I'm standing here with Bill Martin. Bill, and uh, I noticed your bicycle here. Yeah, and I decorate uh, it every year. De I decorate it every year because uh, I like to remember my brother John, and I like it when somebody says his name. John Martin. So it means a lot. It was 55 years ago, but it's still... That's a scorpion with a stinger that lasts. How old were you when John was in the service? 17. So you were, uh, did you serve? By any chance? No. Did you go in? Uh, infantry? For John? Yep. First battalion. He was in the Army. Fourth, in the 4th in Infantry Division, the Ivy Division. Tell us a little bit about him, what you remember about him. Oh, if gosh. you would. See, people see these faces yeah. and they don't understand these are people had lives and affected everybody and they went over and uh, gave their lives for their country and for their fellow so soldiers um, but they're human beings that touch so many other people just if you would put a a little bit more of a picture to this picture of john hey john when john passed away it was a blow to our family that we we changed completely it happens to everybody Talking to other Gold Star families helps, but this day is a tough one. People often confuse us with the hot dogs and barbecues and such, but it's much deeper than that. The true meaning of this is to honor those who've fallen uh, fighting for our country. It's a lot deeper, deeper than deeper thanks than that. For, thanks for coming by. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. So he sent me an article that was uh, written a while back about his older brother, and I'm going to read it to you. And, um, well, let me just read it to you, and we'll take it from there. And this was written on uh, Friday, March 15th, 1968. And it's entitled John Martin by John Kuhn. Some graduates and some seniors remember John Martin. He played roles with fine natural timing. Small parts the audience smiled at, but which helped us glimpse the significance of the main action. In 1964, the mad woman of Shalat 
the broker who rose to financial ecstasy on a chair, and the king of the underworld who rose morally higher in a magic cellar. 1965, the libation bearers, the servant in a wine tunic who tried to close the door on the doom of the house Atreus, and the soldier in helmet and armor, comically and accidentally, too large for the slim young Greek who witnessed and reported the horrors of household slaughter, tragically too large. The parts were too small, naming a name, and he accepted them with grace and talent. And for friendship, ladies and gentlemen, his name was John Martin. Remember him. John Martin was born in Springfield, Pennsylvania, 22 years ago. Now, that was in back, back in 1968. He graduated from Monsignor Bonner High School in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania in 1963. He played parts in amateur theatricals and worked at computer for a living. The Army drafted John in January 1966, and it recognized his potential and commissioned him lieutenant and made him instructor by December 1966. He married Doreen then. Lieutenant Martin was assigned his duty in Vietnam May 1967 to May 1968. John Martin filled out the papers, which got him a six-day leave with his wife in Hawaii, January 29th to February 4th, 1968. And tragically, February 24th, he was missing in action on patrol. And February 28th, he was found. At his wake on March 7th were flowers, vestments, mass cards, and Springfield Legionnaires wearing blue hats. His remains were only partially covered by a flag. And at the end of a long room, along with the sides of the room, a wife and mother and father and the Lansdowne sister, where he sometimes stayed after late rehearsals, and the other sister and the five brothers and their families. Moving down the center, three abreast now, coming since 7 o'clock, and still coming at nine, hundreds of friends, mostly young, talking of him softly as they move, meeting again. Two years are a long time for your people to remember him. It was always the same, she said. Wherever he went, we've had letters from people where he worked, from camp, from over there. He made many converts. Did you know that? That's our idiom, not just converts in a parochial sense. Not a body count of souls signed up to take instruction. We too have felt the appeal of heroic vulnerability. John Martin showed us that remarkable Christian courage to suffer even humiliation for others' sake. He made people feel loved and significant and even made them laugh despite themselves. John Martin was a Christ-like clown with compassionate eyes. He is a broken king, servant and soldier. John Martin, one of the good and generous people. Remember him. And that's just a little bit about one of so many who have been killed in service for us. There's a human being there with many friends. He lit up a room, obviously, when he walked in. People loved him. People liked him. As I spoke with his brother Bill yesterday, the pain was apparent. And it was hard to interview him, and I didn't want to bother him, but simultaneously I wanted the story of his brother, Lieutenant John C. Martin, to be heard and to be repeated. And what Bill said to me, I like when people say his name. I like hearing his name. And so I do my best to honor Lieutenant John C. Martin from Springfield, Pennsylvania, by saying his name. John Martin. And if you notice, it sounds like I said his name a lot of times during this. John Martin. And I'm doing it purposely because him and all his fallen comrades through the course of time deserve that. Memorial Day is their day. Memorial Day is the day for the Gold Star families. And like Bill told me, talking to some veterans. It's Memorial Day every day as they remember their fallen ones and even for the families. So folks, maybe next year we remember this, but I will certainly uh, do this several days prior to Memorial Day next year. And we'll always remember John Martin and we'll always mention John Martin's name here on Finding Subjects podcast. Uh, Bill, it was an honor and pleasure to meet you and so many veterans yesterday. Again, I will say thank you for your service. But most importantly, 
John Martin, Lieutenant John C. Martin, thank you so much, sir, for your service and your dedication and your ultimate sacrifice for us. Please say his name. 